She was 136.6 feet longer than the Titanic. She's just distinctively beautiful and scared the hell out of me. Hey y'all, some of you will believe that this story is not true. That's all fine, well and good. It's up to you to believe what you believe. Some of you don't believe in ghosts or anything of the sort. I do, and a lot of you might think I'm an irrational person, but I'm a Christian and I believe in a God that you cannot see, while some of you might not. So, this is my story, and it was influenced to tell this now instead of any other time, because A, one, <laughs> I didn't feel like telling the story about being stalked was actually beneficial to my channel. Um, it's a very uncomfortable story, and to even use that as a relatable message seemed a little clickbaitish to me, so I left that alone. And then B, two, I recently saw that BuzzFeed uploaded a video about this being an unsolved mystery that the Queen Mary is haunted and whatnot, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. So let me give you a little bit of history. Uh, the RMS Queen Mary, Royal Mail Ship Queen Mary, was named after Queen Mary of England, and um, it was built in the 1930s in the United Kingdom. It's under the Canard Line. There is a Queen Mary II, which actually sailed to Long Beach, California, where Queen Mary I resides permanently and uh, saluted her in, in honor of her existence. There were a slew of ships during the 1930s and, and earlier portions of time, and she is one of the few that's fully intact that uh, has survived. I love value and honor what that ship symbolizes and I was an employee on the Queen Mary in Long Beach in 2012. Uh, in fact, a few months before Whitney Houston passed away. I am a person who believes in a lot of things and I don't question a lot of things when it comes to spirituality and things. Everyone experiences something different. However, my manager at the time, a Barbadian man, <coughs> wasn't the type to believe in anything that he couldn't tangibly touch or see. It's very concrete about that. When you're hired at the Queen Mary, you get your uniform if you're hired to work in the hotel. Well, actually, everyone has a uniform. You get your uniform, um, you get directions and, and employee handbook and everything. And inside of that, if you work in the hotel, which I did, which is a prominent chunk of the ship, um, you get a sheet. A, a one pager that says areas on the ship where things have been reported to have occurred. They do not confirm, they do not deny. They just give you this information because this is a, a an attraction for some people. They love to come and do the ghost tours that take place on the ship and everything. Uh, Queen Mary is a big girl. She's um she's 136.6 feet longer than the Titanic was. Um, she had 81,237 gross tons versus Titanic's 46,329. Like, she, she's a big girl. There's over 56 different type of polished veneers on that ship, and six of them are from trees that are completely extinct. She's absolutely beautiful and stunning, and she scared the hell out of me on two particular instances. <laughs> so let's get into the story then, eh? It had to have possibly been my third day on the ship when I figured out I didn't technically know where the restroom was. My supervisor informed me that if I went down the main hall on the right-hand side of the ship, if I'm standing behind the hotel front desk, that it would be on the right-hand side and I can't miss it. Well, I did miss it. And I was a night audit, so my shift was from 10 p.m. until about 6-ish a.m. And then I would leave and go start a whole nother job an hour and a half thereafter. So this is around 1 a.m. I'm walking down the hall, 
And lo and behold, I passed the bathroom because the bathroom on the original portion of the ship is this big and it's very easy to miss it. It looks like one of the hotel rooms. So I walk all the way to the to the end of the ship and I've toured this thing in daylight to an extent. And I even on my second night there had an official tour all of my own that they do for the ghost tour. I did it with one of the people who worked there for a very long time and they guided me around everything. And um, so I've, I've seen it. I've seen it, okay? But I passed the bathroom. I went all the way to the end of the ship where the theater used to be on the ship. And it was pretty cool. It had um, display cases with old playbills and things of that sort. So I'm looking through them and whatnot. And I look at one on the right side of me. And I bend down and I look into the glass. And I'm looking at the photos and whatnot. And on this side of me, over my right shoulder, I see a reflection of a man. So I freak out and I turn and there's nothing there. To hell with the bathroom. I don't ever want to come in the hallway again. I run down the hall at high speed. So I'm running. I go down the incline. I come on back up. And I just bust through the, the hotel door to the front desk. And my supervisor's like, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Everything everything wasn't fine. It wasn't fine. It was a male. He was young. He had a hat. And his face, he had a little bit of facial hair, but I, I, it was definitely a man's face. Not even a full two weeks later. We're checking in a family or whatever, and they've got a room towards the front of the ship on the same side of the hallway that I was on nights before when I saw the dude in the reflection. So we get them checked in. We're doing our usual. I think it's a Friday night. In fact, I know for a fact it was a Friday because Chris Jericho was on the ship that night and he had two really pretty ladies with him. And I was trying not to fangirl. I'm just checking around. I'm like, thank you for staying with us, Mr. Jericho. But it sounded like, oh my God. One, three, two, one, yeah. So um, we're getting paperwork together or something of the sort. And then you just hear this woman screaming and you hear, <laughs> You hear the feet running in the hallway. She comes up to the front desk and she's like tapping frantically like, you got to see this, you got to see this, you got to see this. And I'm like, what? And my supervisor is looking and like trying to observe if he needs to call for security. And she's grabbing her phone and she's fumbling with it. And she's like, you need to see what's in my phone. You need to see what's in my phone. And I'm like, okay. She takes her phone and she pulls up these pictures and she's like, I'm staying here with my my sister and my dad and something else that part wasn't important what was important was what that woman showed me in her camera her dad and her sister are standing on a wall basically it's a brown wall between them and they're about this close with that much space where you can see the curtains between the two of them this lady shows me her phone and she's going through the photos like this and it's an image, it's an image manifesting in between her and her dad. And it's the same face that I saw on the ship the few nights before that. I swear on everything I believe and hold dear and true. It's the same freaking face. I'm Blanche. Y'all see what color I am. We don't turn white very easily. So my supervisor saw it and he's like, what's wrong with you? And I couldn't, I couldn't hide it from him anymore. I'm like, I've seen that face. I saw that face the night that I went to the bathroom. It came flying back. And he just kind of, well, ma'am, you know, it could just be a trick of the camera. And like, you, you're trying to write off what this woman is saying. They checked out right after that, by the way. You're trying to write off what this woman is saying. I'm telling you I saw the same thing. I don't know that woman from Adam. I don't even remember her name to this day. I just know what I saw, and I know that woman saw the same thing because she had it in her camera. There's no way that you just going to miraculously have somebody with a hat and a mustache. and it, you, it, There's no way you just going to have that. It's just, it, ain't, it ain't no way. I didn't quit. <laughs> Most people would have, but... I had a financial goal in mind. I couldn't just stop. And at that point, I'm like, well, clearly the ship is for real. It's something, something going on with it. So I might as well embrace it. <sighs> a month goes by. I'm still there. Nothing freaky has happened. I'm walking the ship during nighttime at 2 or 3 a.m. looking at the water. Nothing freaky. This particular night, I was uh, on my break. So I was kind of walking the ship or whatever. I walked the ship for a moment. And went up to the uh, 
the promenade where uh, Winston Churchill's room used to be on the ship, like his office when the ship was used for war purposes. And um, I'm walking back down and I get to the front desk for the hotel check-in and I hear a kid laughing and running. I hear a little girl and I see her run up the stairs and I'm like, huh, I wonder how I missed her. And my supervisor's like, missed who? And I'm like, oh, did you see the little girl? I said, I didn't even know we had a little girl here. What little girl, Ashley? What? Quit with me. <laughs> he asked me, what little girl? I said, the little girl who just ran up the stairs. You don't hear a little kid who was laughing? It's like, I didn't hear anything. So at this point, I really thought he was messing with me. And I just, I left it alone. I didn't say nothing else. I quit a month and a half after that. I just could not handle it. It was taking a serious toll on my body. I did not know that that was actually something to be worried about until I watched the BuzzFeed video. And the guys in there said that one of the hauntings is that of hearing a child run around the hallways. I'm gone. I'm gone. So I don't care what you think. I know what I saw and I know what I heard. Um, and I know it scared the crap out of me and I try my best not to go on the ship. I love her, but I like to look at her from a distance because because she's a creepy one. All right. <laughs> Bye, y'all.